What's going on guys, it's a regular guy firearms channel. This is a M92F review, and let's get right to it. We're gonna go from top to bottom starting with the sights. The sights are, in this particular case, a three dot type. But some of the older um, M9 style guns have a dash dot setup, which I personally prefer. Now, and while the three dot setup I personally don't prefer, what I do really like about this particular firearm is that the rear sight is rather wide and the front sight is rather thin. Now this actually makes it quite a bit easier to pick up targets a little bit faster and as far as just the ability to engage targets multiply and quickly it uh, makes it rather easy to move from target to target specifically because that front sight blade is a little bit smaller. So. We're going to go over the action type on this gun, but before we do that, I'm going to discuss something that I rather do not like about this particular firearm. And I'm sorry about the stability, guys. I'm actually on vacation right now, and I don't have my tripod on me. This open barrel design was deliberately put in the gun specifically because the Italians wanted this gun to shoot very smooth and they wanted to reduce the possibility of um, malfunctions and stuff like that. Now the problem with an open barrel design like this is specifically that I see a lot, I, you can see that it could be a problem and I've actually seen dudes lose portions of their gloves and their skin by just getting into the opening of this guy trying to run the slide on it or whatever trying to dodge this safety so they'll run the slide a little bit forward and their ring finger will uh, get caught between the barrel and the slide and they, and I've seen people lose sections of their gloves and sections of their skin so I personally don't like this open uh, barrel design but it does actually do its job it, uh, it allows a more open system to allow for debris and other crap to just flow into the gun versus having to seal it off and the gun is actually very reliable. Now, this is a double single action gun. And of the double single action variety, it is actually impressive as far as how smooth and how crisp a trigger is. Because the double action pull, as you would expect, is long and rather stiff. But the trigger itself is pretty smooth especially when you work the gun in so that's not that big of a deal and the trigger itself while there is some slack in there that actually does help me out a little bit because I'm coming from the Glock family of guns and a lot of people will tell you that there's a little bit of slack in there followed by a little bit of creep and then the gun goes off well for me that actually does help me out a little bit because there is a, there is some extra slack in there some loose slack and then once the gun tightens up and you start to feel a weight stack you got about an eighth of an inch before the gun actually trips. So that to me works out very well and I do like that because of the double single action guns this is one of the very few that I can just jump out of box and start shooting well with without having to figure out where the single action trigger is. Lots of them are real spongy, lots of them are not very good single action triggers at all. So this is a really big plus for me. But now let's move over to this ambidextrous safety. I fucking hate this ambidextrous safety with a vehement passion. Specifically because, yes, it does work, and it does work as a decocker. You can see it, pull, it pushing that out of the way, and that's your firing pin plunger. 
So when you rotate that safety out of the way, it rotates the firing pin plunger out of the way so that the hammer can drop safely without discharging the firearm. Now, there's a couple of things that I hate about this safety. First and foremost, I hate this safety specifically because anytime that I try to run the slide over the top of this thing, and I'll show you right now an issue that I'd have with that. And you can see rather readily that when you try to run the slide and that safety comes on, it becomes a problem specifically because if I'm trying to run this thing and that safety comes down, I might not always remember to flip that safety off. Fortunately, because I run a very high thumbs forward grip, it does get in the way. So running the gun with the safety down is rather easy for me. Unfortunately though, and I've seen this with a lot of, with a lot of guys, is that this safety is in a very awkward place. Specifically, if you're trying to take the safety off, which isn't that big of a deal, but putting the safety on and decocking the gun is a big deal for a lot of guys that are out there. So, personally, because there are a lot better safety designs out there, if you're going to have a manual safety that doubles as a decocker, honestly, I would personally advocate putting it on the frame. Specifically because it's out of the way of my thumbs and I can run the gun a little bit more efficiently. But you know, to each his own. Some people love the safety, I personally hate it. Moving on, um, we actually do have a pretty decent back strap on this gun, which allows you to get nice and high on it. And I rather like this specifically because there isn't a whole lot of issues with the uh, height over bore when you're running this gun. As you saw, it's rather easy to run this gun very fast, and with the back strap in the gun keeping you away from the moving parts but allowing you to get nice and high as well as the grip panels allowing your hands to go into the proper places this gun was designed back then to be shot properly which I personally enjoy the slide serrations on the slide itself are very military good enough in that you know they get the job done but they're nothing special at all and honestly when it comes to running the gun nine times out of ten I'm usually run I'm usually run the slide by coming up here and using the cutouts in the slide to run it or using the slide release. Getting to the slide release, lots of people know that I'm not a huge fan of of running the slide release on uh, any gun, not to mention this one. But the slide release itself is deceptively large and me being left-handed it actually is rather easy to where when I have to insert that new magazine and run the gun seeing as this um, magazine release which is reversible by the way is easy for my fingers to get to I can just use my trigger finger to drop that magazine and then sweep over with my index finger and drop the slide without any problems at all so I actually really do like the stock uh, slide release on this gun and it does um, solve the issue with uh, the safety being in the way of my hands when I'm trying to run the gun but then again, the safety being in the way as far as malfunction clearance is something that you are going to have to consider. And if you don't want to work around it, honestly I would suggest picking a gun with a smoother slide and has all the widgets and stuff on the frame. Now, coming back to this slide release, I rather enjoy it simply because from the factory, even in the 80s, this gun has a reversible magazine release. Now of course you're going to need a screwdriver, you're going to have to undo these grip panels, and you might have to read a couple of directions or watch a couple of YouTube videos as far as how to reverse this magazine because it is a tiny bit complicated. It's not too bad though. But once you have some practice at it, reversing the magazine release on this specific handgun is rather easy and it makes it pretty easy to deal with. Trigger guard up front is hooked and serrated for guys that like to use that in their grip. I personally don't care for it or need it, but for guys that like it, it's value added in a handgun such as this. Typically speaking, the magazines that the gun comes with are 15 rounders. 
And the finish on them kind of sucks. It actually sticks in the gun quite easily. And I've been stopped on more than one occasion trying to reload this handgun. However, military issued uh, M M9 magazines have been refinished so it's much smoother and it's easier to deal with mainly because of the dusty and sandy environments and you can see the multiple magazine release cutouts for this specific handgun so it makes it easier just on the operator to know that you're running adequate ammunition and any M9 magazine that's out there is ambidextrous it's not like the Glock Gen 3 Gen 4 problem and that if you reverse the magazine release on a Gen 4 Glock, you would have to worry about whether or not you're running Gen 3 magazines and whatnot, because from the get-go, these were reversible. And now that honestly I've gone through the top to bottom, which is rather simple on this specific handgun, there's a couple of things that I want to go over, and this is kind of a... It's more of a personal choice type thing, but honestly I think that this really helps as far as the design is concerned. This handgun is one of the few that runs a fixed barrel type design, kind of copying in a, in a way the 1911 and the Browning high power design in that the barrel doesn't rotate up and down when the gun fires and when the action cycles. Okay, And in a lot of ways, personally to me, this contributes in a great way to accuracy, specifically because staying on a 10 inch plate or something like that at 25 yards is not a problem at all if you've had decent handgun training with it so the action itself is very smooth in the regard that the slide is lightened from the cutout that we were talking about earlier and the barrel stays in place so that helps the gun out in a huge regard disassembly is rather easy because all you really have to do is push out this tab which frees up your takedown bar and when you push down on that bar the takedown lever folds down and then from there your slide comes right off when the slide comes off most recoil springs for Berettas I've seen a couple aftermarket recoil springs that are captured but most are not so try and keep your hand in there because if you don't you're gonna have springs shooting across the rooms the room and I see soldiers doing this crap all the time where they're trying to take it apart for the first time and you get and we got spring springs flying across the classroom now from there all you have to do is just push down on your plunger and rotate your barrel out and you can actually see the straight barrel design and how it works this plunger when the gun fires is pushed up against the actual slide and when it's and when that's pushed down the plunger itself rotates down and that actually goes into a cutout in the slide and it allows the slide to move to the rear freely and when it returns to the front it shoves the plunger back up and into place yeah the gun's dirty we just got back from the shoot reassembly is just as easy it's just the reverse of what we were talking about before where all you have to do is reinsert your barrel without jacking stuff up and allow your plunger to go into place or you'll run into the same problem that I was running into. Reinsert your guide rod and spring, keeping it under spring tension. Install your slide. You're going to have a little bit of resistance, but once it reaches flush with the actual rear of the frame here, just flip the takedown lever up and your gun's ready to go again. From there you can run your function check doing whatever you need to do. So, overall impressions. A lot of people have complained about reliability on this specific handgun. But honestly, it is dependent, all handgun maintenance is dependent on the, is dependent on the operator. I've seen people badly abuse Glocks and they'll malfunction. Soldiers and Marines beat the shit out of their gear and lots of them specifically many many officers don't know how to take care of their handgun either so if it's not taken care of it's gonna malfunction any any troop or any person in the civilian world that I've seen take care of their handgun just like anything else the gun runs hundred percent and it's actually very reliable and rather accurate I hate on it a little bit for certain things but bottom line it prints 
it's got good stock sights, and the gun itself is very reliable. So, typically because it's Italian and foreign, you're going to run into prices that are usually around the mid-600 range for it. So, if you want to spend the extra money and get a military clone of a pretty decent firearm, go ahead and run it up. So, that's my time, and remember guys, a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny.